Yes, I'll have to I'll have to hear about that. I'll have to hear about that. Good morning. Would you stand with me, please? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord lives. May my rock be praised. The God of my salvation is exalted. Be exalted, Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your might. Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I will praise you in the great congregation. I will exalt you among many people. God, be exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be over the whole earth. Though the Lord is exalted, he takes note of the humble, but he knows the haughty from afar. For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted above all the gods. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. I exalt you, my God, and the King, and praise your name forever and ever. Alleluia.
Father, we just come to you today. We give you thanks for just an incredible, incredible time that we have to spend together. And Father, we just want to worship you. He is risen. He is risen today. And we are here to celebrate our risen Savior, Christ Jesus. We love you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And it's all this we ask and pray in Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, don't sit down. Don't sit down. No, 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 no. It's Easter Sunday, so I'm going to mess things up for you today, okay? And I'm going to go exactly backwards, all right? Normally I announce, and then we welcome. We're going to do it backwards today. We're going to welcome, and then I'm going to do some announcements. So for those of you who are directionally challenged, hold up your right hand. That, my brother-in-law down here held up his left hand. All right. No, now I'm serious now. Hold up your right hand. That's this one. There. Does that help? All right. Now what I want you to do is turn that direction and look. All right. Now then, turn the other direction and look. Now when you did that, you saw somebody you don't know, somebody that you haven't seen in a long time. And what I want you to do is, if you can, get out of your pew. If you can't, that's okay. But at least go and greet three people this morning and tell them how glad you are to see them. On the count of three. One, two, three, go! There we go. Woo! All right. That was for you, Shannon. You're welcome. If you are visiting with us for the second, first, third time, I don't care how many times you visited with us. If you are visiting with us today, we want to say welcome to First Baptist Church of Mount Zion. It is awesome to have you with us today. You are a blessing to us, and it is our prayer that we will be a blessing to you. We're going to ask you to do one thing for us this morning, and that is to take that inside of your bulletin, fill it out, just so that we can have some information and a, and a record of your visit. Take it, and then go to our hostess center on your way out the door. Give this to them, and they will give you a gift. And if you are, how many of you like M&Ms? There you go. Okay, if you're a visitor, go give that to them. They'll give you a bag of M&Ms. All right, there you go. I knew I'd get you to do it one way or the other. Okay, a couple of other quick announcements for you. Panama Mission Trip. This coming Tuesday night, we are having a community, Monocles is doing a community fun drive for us. If you go to Monocles with a blue flyer that we have out for you on the Welcome Center, they will donate 20% of your your ticket or your bill to our Panama mission trip. So we're encouraging everyone, please go to Monocles and take that flyer with you, and they will donate that money to our Panama mission trip. I want to encourage you to do that. Also, you have an opportunity to participate in pr putting shoes on orphans in Panama. You can buy those while you're stand out in the foyer as well. Either uh, Kara Gilman or Amanda Ferris will be standing out there. See them and they'll have information for you. Life Stewardship Seminar. We all need to plan. We all need to be prepared for the future. On Sunday, May 4th, we are doing a Life Stewardship Seminar and it is open to everyone. Okay, all we're asking you to do is to reserve your spot. It is free. Doug Morrow from the Baptist Foundation of Illinois is going to be here that morning. He's going to bring the message. And then that afternoon, we're going to have lunch and we are going to learn about planning for our 
future. And if you have children, we will provide child care. We just need to know how many people we need to provide child care for. We already have to provide it for myself because I'm one of the children they'll be caring for. So, make, so it's no problem to have more. Okay, last thing. Last thing for you real quick is this. Haiti is back on. August 3rd through the 9th. We are going to Haiti. I am taking a group down to the New Life Children's Home. We will be building a wall in Haiti as part of that children's home and caring for those orphans there, August 3rd through the 9th. I need to know by tomorrow morning that you want to go, August 3rd through the 9th. The reason why is because I'm getting a really good deal on the plane tickets, okay? So I'm trying to secure that. If you want to go... Come and see me immediately following the morning service, or you could use that tear out to indicate, hey, I want to go to Haiti. Put it in the bulletin, or excuse me, tear, fill that out, drop it in the offering plate when it goes by. I will contact you. So, Haiti, so many things that are going on at First Baptist Church, and I'm excited about it and what God is doing here. I'm just excited to be here today, as a matter of fact. Man, amen. You know, there is a tradition in the church that it goes that they that new Christians, after the resurrection, when they met one another, they would greet one another this way. One would say, He is risen, and the other one would respond by saying, He is risen indeed. You got it, so let's try that once. Ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. I'm going to invite Jason and everybody else to come up here, and and we're going to, I guess we're not going to do that just yet. Okay. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you're an awesome God. We love you. I'm humbled to be in your house today. Humbled to be with your people. Humbled to recognize what you did for us on the cross. And I rejoice today in that Jesus Christ defeated death, hell, and the grave. We praise you for this resurrection day and the opportunity to worship your son Jesus Christ who's seated at the right hand today. Father, we love you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. And to you be the glory. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we come to you this morning. We just celebrate and we praise you, Lord, because you are alive. We just thank you for so many blessings, Lord. We know if you've given us this blessing in life, Lord, needs, and we just use this time of offering just to give back to you and just thank you, Lord, for your many blessings for us and how we know that you're always going to take care of all of our needs. I ask these things in your name. Amen.
it out for us. The weight of every curse is broken. One final breath he gave. As heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever He is glorified. Forever He is living.
nations far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, a glorious day. Living, he loved me, dying, he saved me. Bearing, he carried my sins far away. That's all I got to say is, wow. Man, you go through something like that, and uh, I was moved to tears, tears of joy. Jason, Van, ladies, everybody, I, I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Man, that was incredible. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, if you would, please take them and turn to Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Today we conclude my sermon series called The King and I. And the title, the title of today's sermon is called Remember the King is Alive. And it's going to have to do with something about remembering things. You know, today is a very special day. Uh, we have been, I have been blessed this morning to have my, my sister and my nieces and my brother-in-law. See, I even said I was blessed to have you here, Brian. So, and, and, and my parents, okay? So if you guys are concerned or worried about how I am or how I turned out, take all of it right to them, okay? <laughs> and, because everything I know I learned from them. As a matter of fact... You know, normally I tell you a story about Renee on a Sunday morning. I'm going to tell you a story about my mom and dad this morning, okay? Now, mom and dad, they're not spring chickens these days. They're getting a little bit older. I know my mom's looking at me funny. I, I should have waited until after I had Easter dinner before I started this. But they're not getting young anymore. And so there is a running joke in the house about who has the worst memory okay they forget stuff a lot and so what they did was they decided what they would do is they'd start writing stuff down so that way they would remember it and so one day we were at the house in Danville and we were there and dad got up to go to the kitchen and dad as he always does because I'm just like dad dad's always polite dad asks mom if he was anything he could get for her. he always does that just like I do don't I Renee get say amen thank you honey so <laughs> Dad got, up, Dad got up out of his chair, and he said, he said, Goldie, I'm going to the kitchen. Can I get anything for you? And Mom, as she always does, says, of course. And so Mom says, I would like a bowl of ice cream. And Dad says, okay, bowl of ice cream, I got it. And he starts to head towards the kitchen. Mom says, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You need to write that down. You'll forget it by the time you get to the kitchen that I wanted a bowl of ice cream. He goes, no, I won't. So Mom says, okay. I want some strawberries on my bowl of ice cream. And dad goes, ice cream, strawberries, got it. Starts to head off to the kitchen, but mom stops him again. I told you, you need to write this down, Ray. You will forget it. Dad's getting a little perturbed. He says, I will not forget it. And he starts to take off again. Mom says, now wait a minute. Now, on my bowl of ice cream with strawberries, I want some chocolate syrup sprinkled on top of that too. You know, spreading some of that on top of it. All right, got it. I'll go take care of it. He starts to take off. He says, I told you, write it down. You will forget. He goes, I will not forget. She goes, and by the way, I want whipped cream on top of that. <sighs> Dad's getting a little frustrated at this point in time. Not that it ever happens. This is probably one of the few times Dad's ever got frustrated with Mom. I don't think I've ever seen it happen before or, or, or then again. So, so Dad's getting a little perturbed, but he says, I do not need to write this down. I get, I'll get you what you want. And so Dad headed off to the kitchen. 
Needless to say, we're sitting in the front room, I'm sitting there with mom, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. It's taking dad a few minutes. I'm thinking maybe he's having to let the ice cream thaw a little bit so he can get into it, so he can dip it. So we're waiting, we're waiting. So pretty soon, here comes Paul, right back into the front room, and he brings it over, and he goes, here you go, honey, I got just what you asked for, Goldie. And he handed her a plate of bacon and eggs. (laughs) Make matters worse, mom looked up and said, see, I told you, you forgot the toast. Oh, thank you for letting me do that story, by the way. Uh, We do have a tendency to forget things, don't we? And today is a beautiful day. Today is a wonderful day. And today is a great opportunity for us to worship the Lord. And people are going to be enjoying today with family. People are going to be running around and finding Easter eggs and eating candy. We get so tied up sometimes with Easter bunnies and eggs and all that other stuff that we forget what today is truly about. We forget sometimes about the real story of Resurrection Sunday. And today I want you to take away from here this. Remember the King is alive. Our scripture this morning Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. You should be there already. If you are and you can, would you mind please standing in the honor of reading God's word? When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go out and anoint him. And very early on, excuse me, very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Father, this morning we rejoice and give thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the shed blood of our Savior who covered our sins. Thank you, Father, for his resurrection as he defeated death, hell, and the grave, that we might have a relationship with you. He is alive so that we might live, and we give you thanks for that. This morning, Father, hide me behind the cross. This morning, Father, touch my lips and give me the words that you would have me to say. Father, this morning, touch the ears of everyone that is present, that they would have spiritual ears to hear what you have to say to them today. Father, we love you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I invite you to take your seats this morning. Now... From that text that I just read to you this morning, there are some very important lessons that we can take away from this. Four lessons that we can take and apply to our life. These three ladies, Mary, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, they went early to that tomb, but they forgot a few things. And what they forgot needs to be a lesson to us that we will remember. The very first thing that I want us to see this morning is I want you to see that those ladies all of a sudden remembered an obstacle. They remembered an obstacle. Look at verses 3 and 4. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. Here you have three women that are on their way to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. Because they didn't have a chance to do it on that Good Friday. And as they're walking towards this tomb, their hearts are filled with sorrow. Their hearts are heavy. Why? Because their beloved teacher, their beloved friend, the one that they believed to be the Messiah, had been crucified. He was dead and he was buried. And they were going to see him. Mary, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, They had been with Jesus. Matter of fact, they'd been at the cross. If you look at chapter 15, verse 40, it says, There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. They were at the cross. 
They were at the tomb whenever Nicodemus and Joseph had buried him. In 15, chapter 15, verses 46 and 47. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. These women knew what to expect. They knew that there is a stone that was going to be in front of that tomb. They had no idea that a resurrection had taken place. Because you see, on Friday was when they had watched him being placed in that grave. But on Saturday, according to Matthew, the Jews had gone to Pilate and they had said, Listen, listen. This man, when he was here, told us that he was going to rise again in three days. So what we need you to do is you need to place a guard out in front of that tomb. And beside that guard you place out in front of that tomb, you need to seal that tomb to make sure that his disciples do not come and take the body and pretend that there was a resurrection. So the women didn't know that there were supposed to be guards there. The women didn't know that the tomb had been sealed. And at the same time, they did not realize that Jesus was already risen. Because you see, also according to Matthew chapter 28, it says, And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, had, past tense. So as they're on their way, that earthquake had already happened. That stone had already been rolled away. Christ had already been risen. But they did not know that. So they're on their way to the tomb. They're just walking on their way to the tomb, and they're sad, and they're disheartened. And all of a sudden, they had the aha moment. Oh, no. What about the stone? Who is going to roll the stone away? I can see them now walking along, and all of a sudden, them freezing going, oh, no. Now, you all have been there, haven't you? You know, you've been driving, you, you, you're going someplace, and you know that you're supposed to bring something, and you're in the car, and you're over halfway there, and all of a sudden you go, did you remember that? And you're looking at her going, I thought you remembered that. No, I didn't remember that. Oh, no, we forgot. It's a painful moment, and it's a painful moment for them because they remembered that there was an obstacle that stood between them and their King Jesus. It was something that was in their mind an immovable object. Some of you here this morning are facing incredible obstacles. Some of you here this morning are facing stones that stand in between you and King Jesus. Maybe that stone is a medical bill you received. Maybe that stone is a test result that you have received. Maybe that stone is a bill that seems unpayable. Maybe it's something else. Maybe that stone is an addiction. Maybe that stone is a relationship problem. Maybe that obstacle is something at work. What obstacle is standing between you and your relationship with King Jesus? The obstacle that you were so focused on that you forgot to place your eyes on Jesus Christ. Folks, the ladies didn't know this, but fulfillment and hope was born that Easter morning right then and there because you see that stone had been rolled away. Folks, listen to me. Those stones in your life that blockade you from Jesus Christ have been rolled away. You see, those ladies didn't know the stone was gone. They had a choice. They could do one of two things. They could stop where they're at, go back to town, find somebody who might be able to roll that stone away and bring them with them, or keep right on trucking. And you know what they did? They took a step of faith they did not know what to expect but you know what they found when they got there the stone was gone they went in confidence that god would make a way out of no way it was just a little step of faith it was just a few steps that ventured out into the goodness of god and it says in verse four and looking up they saw that the stone had been rolled back it was very large God satisfied. God answered. God came through. The stone was rolled away and the world knew 
freedom. The stone was rolled away and the heart's new hope. The stone was rolled away and everything that held them back was wiped away and defeated. Because you see, when Jesus Christ came from the grave, it meant that the old enemy of sin, death, and the grave were defeated. It was over with. It would no more have any more power over us. Folks, listen to me. Maybe this is the first time you've been here. Praise the Lord for being here. We're great to have you. Maybe this is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time you've been here. Praise the Lord. It's great having you here. And you've heard me tell you about the gospel. You've heard me tell you about the good news. You've heard me tell that every single one of us are sinners and we deserve death, hell, and the grave. That is a true statement. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And maybe you've heard me tell you that Christ wants a relationship with you or God wants a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for you. For God so loved the world, that means you that he died on the cross for you. Maybe you've heard me say all those things. And you've sat there and you said, well, Pastor Tracy, I will do that as soon as I get this taken care of. I will make Jesus Lord of my life as soon as I stop sinning. I'll make Jesus Lord of my life as soon as I get this bill paid. I'll make Jesus Lord of my life as soon as I get this relationship fixed. I'll do this. Those are obstacles that are standing between you and Jesus. Folks, when that grave was open, when that stone was rolled away, it was removed. And now you have an opportunity to see Jesus. You have an opportunity to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That obstacle has been taken off, taken away. Take a step of faith, just like these ladies took a step of faith. You see, the stone is rolled away. The living Christ has moved the stone of sin. It is gone. He is alive. No matter what unmovable stone is standing between you and God's best for you, you can be sure that God will take care of them. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 through 39, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for you that you could have everlasting life with God forever in heaven if you'll believe in him. They had forgot about that stone. Folks, don't let stones stand in your way. The second thing I want you to see is this. These ladies actually forgot the words of Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 7, it says, There you will see him just as he told you. Like so many of us today, those ladies let their problems cause them to forget the promises of God. Did you catch that? Like so many of us today, these ladies let their problems cause them to forget God. The promises of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be transparent here for a minute, okay? I'll I'll be transparent with you for a second. Sadly, I have to admit that too often I allow problems in my life cause me to forget the promises of God. Because, you see, I look at the problems that I face and I look at them only in the, my limited ability to overcome them or to solve them. I take my eyes off Jesus, I take my eyes off his word, and I begin focusing on the problems, trying to figure out how I can solve it. Trying to figure out how I can overcome it. Trying to figure out how I can make it happen. In the same way, when these women arrived at the tomb that morning, they discovered a stone had been miraculously rolled away the night before. But in their despair, they had let something very visible go past and unnoticed. What was it? The promises of God. They had forgotten what Jesus had told them. In Mark chapter 14, verse 28, it says, But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. 
Mark chapter 9, verse 31 says, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill Him. And when He is killed after three days, He will rise. Folks, listen. This is the lesson that's here for you and me today. The lesson is this. We need to focus on the Word of God. We need to focus on His promises and not our problems. That's why the author to the book of Hebrews that's what the author of the book of Hebrews meant when he said in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 let us keep our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith John tells us that the women and the disciples had to be reminded that Christ was going to die and that he was going to rise again. And when they lost sight of those promises, when they forgot what God had told them, you know what entered their life? Fear. Fear came into their life. They became very afraid. Every single one of us sitting here today has problems. Every single one of us has problems. They may be of different sizes, they may be different shapes, but we all have them. And when we become focused on those problems, and we forget about the promises of God, we become overwhelmed with the promise that we face. And when we become overwhelmed with the promise that we face, you know what happens? We get afraid. I know you men out there saying, I don't get afraid of nothing. I guarantee you, you're afraid. You just ain't admitting it. Okay? I guarantee it. You are afraid. Maybe you're afraid of, I don't know where my next paycheck's coming from. I don't know where my next meal's coming from. I don't know how I'm going to care for, I don't know how I'm going to put my kids through school. I don't know. The problems, they mount. And we become afraid. And what happens when we become afraid is we experience fear in our troubles rather than faith in our troubles because we forgot the promises of God. We look at the troubles in our life with eyes of fear, as opposed to looking at the troubles in our life with the eyes of faith. Listen to me. Write this one down. Look it up later. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul writes this. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We need to look at God's Word, read God's Word, write it upon our hearts that we might not sin against Him, study His promises so that we will not forget what God has said. Psalms chapter 119 verse 28 says, My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. A couple of my favorite passages when it comes to the promises of God is Matthew chapter 6 verse 30 through 34. Matthew writes, But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. One of my favorite verses of all time, Matthew six, thirty three, Jesus says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Verse 34, therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Then you could look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Approach it with faith. Approach it with prayer. And the peace of God will overcome you. Verse 11 and 13 of Philippians chapter 4 says this, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. This is Paul. He's speaking to us from a jail cell, being chained, beaten. Paul says, I'm not talking about being in need. I've learned in whatever situation to be content. Have we learned to be content? Verse 12 says, I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, of abundance and need. 
because I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Folks, we need to focus on the promises of God and not the problems. Take steps of faith, not steps of fear. It's amazing how if we will focus on the promises of God's word and rest in him, that God will take care of the details and amazingly, we arrive home safe. These ladies forgot that. They had an obstacle that they were worried about. They forgot what Jesus had told them. And then this next thing that I want you to see. These ladies forgot something that I think is so, so, so important. This is something that I want you to hear the clearest this morning. They forgot to tell others. Mark chapter 16 verse 8 says this. And they went out and fled from the tomb. For trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now that's not the traditional way that we usually end the Easter story, is it? With these first witnesses hiding and trembling and not saying anything, not telling anyone about the good news of Jesus' resurrection. They got there, the stone was rolled away, they got in there, and I'm sure they saw that angel sitting there on the right-hand side, and it said something to them. I'm sure that they were scared to death. But that does not excuse them for doing what they were instructed to do, which was go and to tell. If you are a follower of Christ, if you say, I am a Christian, then you have been told to be a witness. The Bible does not say, do you want to be a witness? The Bible doesn't say, do you want to tell somebody about that? You just, if you want to, that's okay. You just go ahead and do it. No. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Folks, we are to be the witnesses. We are to tell others. We need to remember to tell others. And I'll tell you what. I think we have less of an excuse than those women do when it comes to not telling others. We have a less of an excuse. You know why? Because as Christians, as followers of Christ... We have the power of the Holy Spirit within us. We have no excuse. So let me ask you this morning something, okay? If you don't have your steel toe boots on, now's the time to put them on. If you didn't bring them with you, pull your feet back underneath the pews because that way I won't stomp on them quite so hard, okay? Let me ask you a few questions. What is keeping you from telling others about Jesus. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of what people might think of you if you mention Christ? Are you afraid of what people might think of you if you invite them to church? Are you afraid that people may not stop talking to you? Are you afraid that when you tell them about Jesus that they just aren't going to have anything to do? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid to tell them about the hope that you have in a risen Savior, in the risen Lord of Lords, in the risen King of Kings? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, We need to be ready to give an answer to every man for the hope you have in you. We need to be ready and prepared to tell others about Christ Jesus. You're sitting there saying, okay, come on, Pastor Tracy. It, it, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I mean, I live my life good. I'm okay. I'm doing well. You know, I, I don't cuss. You know, I don't do those things. I don't go to those places I used to go to. I'm okay. So what's the big deal about not telling others about Jesus? Let me tell you what the big deal is. Big deal is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 through 33. And it says this, everyone who acknowledges me before men. This is Jesus speaking. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. That's the big deal. Let me tell you another big deal. Christ Jesus was scourged, beaten, to within an inch of his life for you and me his hands and feet were nailed to a cross for you and for me he carried a cross through the busiest and most populated parts of the city for you and for me everyone saw him 
This was not some Hollywood dramatization, okay, where you see him clothed and everything. No, he was naked, he was beaten, he was brutalized, and he hung on a cross before everyone for you and me. Don't tell me about being embarrassed. Christ stood that humiliation for us. And if he's willing to do that for us, we should be able to tell others about his love for them. We need to remember to share the good news with someone today. Not just today, but every day. And it isn't just good news. It is incredible news. Because you see, He is risen. The King is alive. The last thing I want you to look at this morning is this. They were told not to forget something. They were told not to forget a disciple. Look in verse 7. In verse 7, the angel tells the women, Go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. Did you hear that? He said, tell the disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you. He He picked Peter out specifically. Peter was one of the disciples, so why did he single Peter out? The answer is this. Peter had said that he would stand by Jesus no matter what. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 26, Peter said, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Then in Matthew chapter 26, verses 74 through 75, this is what happened. Talking about Peter. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This disciple, Peter, who spoke so boastfully, who spoke so pridefully, denied the King of Kings, denied the Lord of Lords. He denied the Messiah. So why did he mention Peter by name? This is why. Peter needed restoration badly. He needed to be restored. And so what we see here, whenever that angel says, the disciples and Peter, we're seeing grace extended. We're seeing unmerited favor going towards Peter. Because what had Peter done to earn that? Not a thing. It is grace. Now I'm telling you, we are all like Peter. This is Hard stuff to hear, but we are all like Peter. We all sin. The Bible tells us we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We are all like Peter. And guess what? I got bad news for you. In some ways and at some time, we all deny Christ. Hard for you to hear, isn't it? Hard for me to say. Sometimes we deny it with our actions. Sometimes we deny it with our words. Sometimes we deny it by the sin that we think that we're hiding in our life. And every single one of us, just like Peter, need to experience His grace and we need to be restored. This teaches us a second bit of good news, and that is that Jesus cares about each and every one of you personally. Jesus is interested in you as an individual. His grace is for each and every one of us. His blood that was shed to cover our sins was shed to cover the sins of Tracy Smith. It was shed to cover the, to cover the sins of David Marshall, of Renee Smith. It was shed, put your name in the blank, but Christ died on the cross for you. This resurrection day that we celebrate, this resurrection story, isn't just some generic good news that's for all of us. It is a special message for each individual that is here this morning, each individual in the world. It is the gospel. It is the good news for you. And praise God, Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So this morning... As you sit here on this glorious Resurrection Sunday, 
Let's not forget or use those obstacles as an excuse to separate us from the love of Christ. Let's remember the promises of God. 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's not forget what it says in John chapter 14, verses 1-4, through 4, where it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that? I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to Myself, that where I am, you may be also. What incredible news. The Gospel. Death, hell, and the grave have been defeated, and Jesus is alive because He is risen. He is risen indeed. Listen to me this morning, folks. God cares about each and every one of you. This is a glorious day. You want to make it an even more glorious day? Make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life. He died on the cross for you. He defeated death, hell, and the grave for you. He went to prepare a place for you if you will place your faith and trust in Him for the forgiveness of your sins because He loves you. John 3, 16. You all know it. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I can't think of a better invitation than that verse alone. The fact that God loves you. God sent His Son to die on a cross for you so that you could have eternal life with Him forever. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. That whosoever is each and every one of us. God desires that no one should perish. God desires that we would spend eternity with Him forever. But we have to place our faith, our trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Now listen, I'm not asking you this morning if you come to church. I'm not asking you this morning if you do anything at all. I'm not asking you this morning if you give. I'm asking you, have you asked Christ to be the Lord of your life? Have you submitted yourself to Him? Have you repented of your sins? If the answer is no, don't wait another minute, don't wait another second, because we have not been promised tomorrow. Make today the glorious day of all by saying, Father, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Come into my life and be the Lord of my life. That's all it takes. In just a minute, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. That hymn of invitation, we're going to stand and we're going to sing. And we're going to invite you to come down. Those of you who maybe you want to give your life to Christ, come on down. Maybe you want to come and join this church, come on down. Maybe you just want to come and pray, come on down. Maybe you know that you haven't been telling others, guess what, come on down. But I'm just going to ask you to be sensitive to how God is leading you today. If you're here today and you know that you need Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to pray for you. But I want you to do me a favor. No one looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not asking you to do anything else. I just want to pray for you. I'm going to ask you if you could just just slip your hand into the air, and I'm going to pray for you. No looking around. Nobody's looking. Nobody's looking. Nobody's looking. All right. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. All right. Father, you saw those hands that were lifted up. You know what they need in their life. Father, I pray right now that you would give them the words to say as they call out to you, that as they call and say, Father, forgive me. Father, we know that you are faithful and true, and we thank you for that. Father, here we are, use us. For this, who, these who have lifted up their hands today, I rejoice. And I pray, Father, that you'd give them the courage and the strength to make their decision known at some point in time so that the world knows that they have given their lives to Christ. 
Father, we love you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. For it's all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand this morning if you would. Like I said, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. If you, I'm just going to encourage you to simply respond as the Holy Spirit leads you this morning as we sing.